Well, hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Edits with Capture One. My experience of going through learning how to use this program, which is kind of cool. And uh, I'm going to compare it a little bit to Lightroom. But today, the biggest thing that we're going to talk about is the lack of the dehaze filter, or the dehaze tool, I should say, in Capture One that Lightroom does have. But as I found out that actually Capture One does have that tool, it's just it's not named that. And dehaze is really, and as you can see in Lightroom, it really is a contrast tool. There's a lot of contrast tools that uh, we use in both of these programs, but we're gonna just gonna go over how a really flat image with some fog in it is worked on in Capture One. So let's get to it. Put my specs on so I can see what the heck's going on. Okay, so let's get over here to, to Ecamm Live and I can switch over to the screen. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna blow this up just a little bit if I can. So you can see what's going on, I think you can. So as you can see here, we're talking about what we're gonna be doing with um, these the tools right over here as you can see we're looking at the levels which are the most important thing that you can use the co control the contrast in a scene and the biggest problem is you can see from these two histograms here that we've got a nice bell curve right in the middle which everything's in the midtones and we don't want everything in the midtones we want to spread it out a little bit no, oh, by the way, um, I caught onto a guy from the UK. His name is uh, Paul Reifer or something like that, and he is—he's great. He explains everything, every tool, what it does, how it does it, why it does it. It's awesome. I'll put the link to his channel down below because you'll really get a lot out of it. But make sure you keep watching me for my experience in this stuff. It's kind of cool. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to try and spread this histogram out a bit. And we're going to move this over to about 177 and that range up 176 and we're going to move this over here to the edge now we used to do this in um in photoshop all the time back in the day when we we're just dealing with jpegs we used to use the levels all the time to adjust how the image looked and how the histogram was uh, was adjusted so here we go. The next thing I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to go up to white balance. The white balance here, as you can see, this image is a little bit on the magenta side. And uh, the way I have this adjusted, it's uh, my Kelvin should be about about 47 because I've done this before 47 98. And this tint we're taking some tint out so minus 2.3 and as you can see this looks a little bit more natural um i don't you know it's interesting i shot this with the 55 to 200 and i got some some really interesting things i didn't expect which were some uh vignetting in the bottom of this frame i don't know why that was and i got this really weird color balance Anyway, so we're gonna keep working on this and we'll show you here how this worked here. And then the other thing I'm gonna do to make these, these um, beech tree leaves pop a little bit more, we're gonna use the, the Velvia simulation because they jump out a little bit more. Now, I could go in and I could tweak this even more by working on the, uh, the curve a little bit. I don't, I, mean, I probably shouldn't do this, but I could add just a little bit more of an S to this curve a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more contrast to it. This is micro contrast adjustment with the curve tool. You go in here to exposure and exposure. I only raise this just a little bit because it's already kind of bright. And um, I'd not actually I knocked the brightness down a little bit. Contrast, I just I still added a little bit. And the brightness, I knocked this down to about four, I think. And the saturation, I bumped this just a little bit to 12, just to give these leaves some pop. Somewhere in that range. As you can see, everything is starting to jump a little bit more now. 
Um, and we'll close that up. And the high dynamic range, I didn't really mess with this that much. Um, the highlights and the shadows, I didn't work with it. I'm trying not to add too much more contrast back into this scene. I want it to just make sure that, as you can see, this histogram is really spread out nicely. Now, it looks beautiful like that. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to uh, add a little bit of highlight somewhere in that range. And the shadow, I'm going to basically take away a little bit of the shadow detail. I'm going to go to 12. Ooh, this should be up about 18. Okay, so I'm going to close that up. And then we go to the clarity tool and this is another micro contrast so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a little bit of clarity like 22 i think i have it set at and structure you have to be very careful with you try not to add too much here and close that up and sharpening i have a preset for landscape photos at 400. i'm going to leave the radius and the threshold alone and you can see, whoop, I don't want to do that too fast. Now you can see there's quite a bit of difference between that and that. Boy, I look like an expert, don't I? I'm clearly not. So, shut that off. And um, let's see. I think I've got everything the way I want except for, whoop. <laughs> We don't want to do that. Get back to fit. All right, there we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this. Now, I'm going to uh, use unconstrained. And I'm going to come down from the top a little bit. I don't like this tree over here too much. Crop it in like that. I'm going to take these trees out here to the right. Get rid of that. And oh, come on. I... This is one thing I don't I don't like about this is my mouse. Every time I move it around, it tends to. All right, so that's about the crop that I want. As you can see, and I'll blow this up for you. Whoop, too much. That's 100%. You can see you can see the ethereal look of a foggy day here. Um, you know what I? Maybe it's still a little bit bright. I might want to knock this down a little bit with the exposure, which is really global. Yeah. The brightness is just, the brightness hits just the bright areas, which unfortunately is the um, the fog. Let's see what that does is, yeah, just a little bit. Okay, so I think that's finished here. And you can see, we'll go up here to the before and after and you can see what a difference look at the difference that makes wow but it still has that look of the foggy day now there are other things i can do to make these leaves pop i could go in here to my color editor and i probably shouldn't be doing this and pick the little tool here and um you know maybe pick out one of those colors like this and then add my more saturation to it and lightness brighten them up a little bit more you can see that that's already done a little bit to that pretty nice it's pretty nice i can't complain about it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to flip over to an image in lightroom and i'm going to show you how uh lightroom with a with a uh, a snow picture that i've got that starts out pretty flat because it's snowing a lot. Um, hopefully, it will uh, be able to adjust it. The, the problem is, is that it does such a great job in auto. Um, see if I can find it now. Lightroom. There it is. All right. So now, if we come on, oh, wrong, wrong key. All right. So what I'm going to do over here is, is I'm going to. If I can find it, here it is. I'm gonna go over here. I gotta go to the very edge, eh, let's see. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna go over here and, and I'm just gonna do a an auto adjustment. This is, now watch, watch what this does. This is just auto in Lightroom. 
looks pretty nice, doesn't it? <laughs> now, um, maybe we want to bring the highlights even more over a little bit and maybe even adjust things a little bit differently and add a little bit of clarity. Now watch what the dehaze filter will do to this. Remember, the dehaze filter is only a micro adjustment, but in Lightroom, it's a global contrast adjustment. Even though this presence tool here are supposed to be little minor variances of uh, contrast, this slider really is pretty heavy handed. See what it's doing? Look at that. That's 40. Now you can also lighten it up a little bit, but it tends to muddy the picture up a lot. So I would never use it that way. So that's the difference between the dehaze filter in Lightroom and using levels in um, Capture One. So we're gonna go back to our picture in Capture One and you can see that really we have a an incredible picture here that I need to uh, oh, show you the whole screen. So that's it for this week's Sunday edit. I hope you like it. Boy, what a difference. Look at this. <laughs> I'm still amazed at the difference between that. Look at that. Wow. Pretty amazing. So that's it for this week. And I hope you enjoyed my little playing around with Capture One's dehaze filter, which isn't really there, but it is there. So that's it for this week. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe and um, give me a like and all that. Wait a minute, I got it. You know what? You need to see me large, right? Here we go. Ha! So if you like this video, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, give me a like and a comment. That would be awesome. And I'm enjoying playing with all these tech tools, but I'm really still not that great at it. <laughs> Hopefully these will get better. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the the uh, Capture One Dehaze tool. It was fun. Uh, oh, that's right. It doesn't have it. Lightroom does. But it's in a different place. So that's it for this week, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>